So today we are going to talk about actuarial science. The first question most most people ask is what is actuarial science and what do you become once you complete the course? So you become an actuary and the question is what do they do? So I'll give you an example and the most common example is in the insurance field. Um, if you or somebody in your family is paying premiums to an insurance company for life insurance, ask them how much premium they are paying. Whatever the amount is, right? it has to be give, uh, calculated by the insurance company and given to that particular individual, okay? which means it's very specific. Now, how does the insurance company calculate the premium? They will take into account uh, the insured person's entire genetic background, any diseases in the family, are they living in a polluted city or a, you know, relatively healthy environment? Are they in an occupation where their life might be in jeopardy? Because when you do these kind of things, the risk uh, of you actually dying is higher than others. And that's why the premium you pay is increased. Now this premium calculation based on all these factors, right? Genetic, disease, city, occupation, more and more. This calculation requires a lot of statistics, a lot of understanding of risk. And this calculation is what actuaries do. So, basic of actuarial science is risk. Actuarial, actuarial science teaches you about risk through statistics. So, you need to re be really, really strong, at least have a strong affinity towards statistics. Now, when I was deciding what to study, I remember I had a couple of... Uh, People who were guiding me and I remember the one of them telling me that if you want to pursue actuarial science, what you need to do is you need to be prepared to lock yourself in a room for five years to study and throw the key away. It's one of those ways to really clear these exams because it's one of the most difficult courses in the world. Similarly, they also say that because it's one of the most difficult, it's still one of the highest paying jobs. I think if you still search for one of the highest paying jobs, actuaries always shows up and Again, to compensate for such a high return in terms of monetary investments, it's also super, super, super stressful. They say that you burn out if you're an actuary, if you actually become an actuary, you burn out within a few years, like five to 10 years, which means you can retire. If you, if you start at 20, finish it by 25, 26, 27, you can retire before 40 and have a super lavish lifestyle. So actuarial science is about these kind of uh, things. It's, it's about risk. You need to have an affinity towards statistics. The exams are incredibly difficult, but so is the reward. In fact, in India, there haven't been more than a thousand actuaries who've actually cleared all the exams. So let me get into the technical aspects of this course. Now, a huge confusion that students have with actuarial science is that there are two bodies or two kinds of exams that you can actually give. One is the Indian and one is the UK, uh, uh, you know, version, you can say. What does this mean? So there are two bodies. One is in India called the Institute of Actuaries of India. And the other body is in UK, which is the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. Now, both of them have the same kind of exams and both give you a certification uh, of becoming an actuary. But the approach to both is slightly different. So throughout this video, I'm going to explain all aspects using both the Indian as well as the UK version. Because in India, we have a split. We have a lot of students who go for the Indian version, but we also have probably more than 50% actually who go for the UK version. So I'm going to now break this video down into four parts. The eligibility, the academic structure, the scope of actuarial science and the fees. Let me start with eligibility. Now, if you talk about the Indian Institute, the eligibility is just that you need to have cleared 12th and you need to give a basic entrance exam called ACET. Really manageable. Um, if I talk about the UK worship, uh, you need... Uh, in your 12th, you need to have taken math and you should have at least secured 85% in math. If you did not, then in your graduation, which most of the time for Indians would be BCom, you need to have secured 55%. And now the academic structure. Luckily, the academic structure for both the Indian as well as the UK body is the same. The exams are split into 13 exams, which are further split into four sections. Core principles, core practices, specialist uh, principle and specialist advanced. Now, for the Indian body, the exams are around 3 hours 15 minutes, whereas for the UK body, it's 3 hours. The, for the Indian body are held every June and November, twice a year. And the exams for the UK body are held every April and September, again, twice a year. Now, let me talk about the scope of actuaries. So, first of all, what kind of companies uh, hire actuaries? 
if I look at the insurance sector, right, companies, whether it's LIC, whether it is uh, HDFC Life Insurance or um, ICICI Prudential, SBI, all of these companies hire actuaries. If I talk about consulting, which is another profile, uh, companies such as the big four, KPMG, Deloitte, PwC, EY, they hire. Another avenue for actuaries is um, pension funds. A lot of pension funds, we just checked, there were so many openings even today of different different pension funds hiring actuaries. Now, the good part is that if you are in college, you just think of starting actuarial science, you need to aim that by the time you graduate, you should finish, let's say, five, six, seven papers and more if possible. But if you complete a few papers and you graduate, you can start working in these companies with a salary package of five to six lakhs, which is what similar to what CAs get. And that's really good because as you start and then every paper you clear, you still get a certain amount of hike every for every exam that you clear. So your growth becomes nonstop. If you are one of those rare, if you complete actuarial science, the potential you have is unlimited. It can go from a 50 year, uh, up for a 50 lakh a year package into crores, depending on how you perform, you know, what your experience is, X, Y, Z. But the, but the potential is that high. That is why it's one of the most sort of the highest paying jobs with the highest amount of stress. So it's probably not a cup, you know, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, also, there are new roles such as um, an actuarial audit. Which means if I'm working, if I'm an actuary, I'm working in an insurance company and I calculate the premium of somebody, but the company wants to cross verify. They'll go outside to a consulting company who is an actuarial auditor, where there are other actuaries and they will cross verify my work. So actuaries, actuaries basically have options to work in these kind of companies as well as in independent companies in India. Now, lastly, when it comes to whether working in India or overseas. Now, if you talk about the Indian body, the Indian body, of course, you can work in India, but it has MOUs with countries such as UK and Australia. When I talk about the actuarial body of UK, uh, they have MOUs across the globe, so you can work anywhere. And finally, the fee structure. Now, this is the major difference between the Indian and the UK version, uh, UK body, right? So, let's talk about the Indian version. If you complete all the exams, so when I'm what I'm covering the fees are the exam fees, the registration and the institute study material. If you cover it all, it will come close to one to one and a half lakhs over all these years. When I talk about the UK body, the same thing, right? The exam fees, the registration and the institute study material will come close to six to six and a half lakhs based on today's pound rate. Okay, so it's literally six X almost 6x as expensive, which is why a lot of students land up taking the Indian version. Uh, there is some respite though, if you want to go the UK route. Uh, the UK body has said that if your income is below 7250 pounds, today that's almost 7.25 lakh rupees a year. If your income is lesser than that, which it is for most students, then the body give a respite. They will reduce your fees. Probably it'll go from 6 close to 3 lakhs. So, if you are planning on taking it and taking it from the UK body, do apply for this in case you are eligible. So guys, this is the fee structure. The return on investment is phenomenal. It's only, I am repeating, a lot of people get extremely excited about actual science with the prospect of how incredibly successful you can become and it's true. But it's not the same for everybody. One small piece of advice from Zell to anybody listening. We always tell people that unless you are extremely confident that this is what you, you know, you've identified that you really love, you really enjoy statistics. I would suggest have some other strong qualification either parallelly or before you start actuarial in case you'll end up getting stuck after let's say seven, eight, nine papers. Everyone is, it's not everyone's cup of tea. A lot of people change later, which might be a little late. I would rather that you plan something beforehand. I know people who do things simultaneously, which is difficult, but it's better because when things get tough, you know, you can complete the other course, have some base in your, um, in your profile, in your academic career, and then you can continue doing actuarial science simultaneously. If you love it, if you're sure of it, then any which ways you can continue doing this for the rest of your life without any uh, hurdles, without any hiccups. So with, the, with that said, I hope that uh, you guys, uh, you know, found some value in this course. If you have please post it in the comments. Uh, if there are things we've missed out and you'd like to know, once again, leave them in the comments. We'll definitely get back to you. Thank you. So guys, wait. Before you leave, I'm going to leave you all with the same old. Do you know what the difference between you and a successful version of you is?
the successful version of you would not miss out on subscribing to this channel today.